We got a great episode for you today. Thank you for all of you who have registered for our upcoming Empowered Investor Cruise. We are getting a very exciting group together. I'm really happy to say, I know we started marketing and getting the word out for this a little bit late, frankly, in the cruise world. This is coming up in April and our early bird is about to close. So go to jasonhartman.com right on the front page get your tickets for the Empowered Investor Cruise. This is a mastermind group. It's a small group cruise, and it's going to be just fantastic on the beautiful brand new Celebrity Apex, an absolutely stunning ship. You know, when you're going to vacation, why not vacation with like-minded people, people who can teach you things, people that can contribute to your life. You can contribute to their life. We're going to have speaker dinners. It's just going to be a great cruise. So I'm super excited about it and wanted to say thanks to everybody who's registered. And thanks to those of you who are planning to join us. You better get your tickets quickly, jasonhartman.com for that. Okay, let's go into this example. First of all, here is what happened last year. This is hot off the press. You know, these statistics lag a little bit in the real estate world because they're not immediate as they are in the stock market, for example. But look at these great numbers, okay? This is Case Shiller, and I don't even like the Case Shiller Index. You know that, you've heard me talk about it. But Case Shiller Index says we are up. 5.1% in terms of prices for last year. And FHFA says we are up 6.6%. And everybody thought it would be the complete opposite. They thought there'd be a crash. I told you there wasn't going to be one. <laughs> hey, look, folks, when the data changes, I'll tell you there's going to be a change in the market but there's just been no data to support it. Everybody was trying to pluck data out of the air the last few years and talk about how there's going to be such a big, devastating real estate crash, and it just never materialized. And I told you it wouldn't materialize, but here you can look at the different regions of the U.S. and you know what their price change is year over year, November to November. Again, like like I say, real estate statistics lag. You got to wait a couple of months to get them, but here they are, hot off the press. Eight point two percent the prior year, and then the following year, six point six percent. And this is the FHFA survey. So. What does this really mean? Because if you listen to the liars out there, the people that would mislead you, including, by the way, Robert Schiller, I have to say, I read one of his books, The Irrational Exuberance Book, many years ago, and I heard Jim Cramer talk like this, and I've heard a lot of people talk like this. They must be just incompetent or they are intentionally misleading you. I do not know which, but here's the way they mislead you. They'll say something to the effect of, and I've, you know, I've heard this, I read similar examples in Schiller's book, and I heard Jim Cramer say it, and I've talked about it before. He'll say something to the effect of, well, you know, real estate always underperforms the S&P 500 index because real estate might appreciate at 6% annually, but the S&P will do 8 or 9% annually. And fine, but he completely neglected telling you about all the other multidimensional characteristics of income property, right? He didn't tell you about mortgage pay down from your tenant. He didn't tell you about tax benefits. He definitely didn't tell you about leverage. We're going to talk about that in a moment with an example. And he didn't tell you about inflation-induced debt destruction or all of these other great benefits income property has that make it multidimensional and how it just handily beats the S&P 500 index. I, I remember maybe some of you, I know have been listening to me for many, many years, you know, 15, 18, 19 years. Some of you have been sticking with this show for a very long time. And maybe some of you attended this event. When we had an office back in Costa Mesa, I gave a one-day seminar, and that was a Creating Wealth seminar, and it was right during the Great Recession. And everybody was talking about there's such a real estate crash. Real estate is terrible. And I showed with empirical data how income property compared to stocks, precious metals, 
compared to everything else, how income property was the best performing asset class in the entire world during the Great Recession. Yes, folks, I showed that. I laid it all out and nobody could argue about it because it's got these beautiful multidimensional characteristics that the other assets don't have. So that's the difference, right? Okay, so let's look at an example of just one of these before we get to Martin Armstrong. So here's our survey, right? It said 6.6% appreciation. Now, if you put 20% down, of course, that means you have a 5x return on that investment because you have leverage. You only put in 20% of the money, the bank or OPM other people's money was responsible for the other 80%. All right, so what does that mean? Let's go over an example, a semi-real world example. Let's just do some quickie back of the napkin math as they say here, okay? Remember Arthur Laffer was just on the show and the Laffer curve was outlined on a napkin, on a cocktail napkin. <laughs> so uh, amazing how that changed the world. It was so influential. So $350,000 house, 6.6% appreciation. Well, that return on investment unleveraged would be a gross return of $23,100. Simple math. But with 20% down, you only put 70,000 into the deal to buy the $350,000 house, which now amplifies your return because remember, you got back, now it's a recognized return, but it's not a realized return because you didn't sell the house. So of course it's more complicated than this for better and worse. Why for worse? Well, because if you sold the house, you'd have closing costs that would obviously eat into your return, right? But if you're one of our investors and you're following our plan, you're keeping these houses for a while, right? They're long-term buy and hold investments. You're not flipping, you're not eating up your return on huge tax bills or closing costs, right? And on the good side, it doesn't include tenant pay down of your mortgage. It doesn't include positive cash flow. It doesn't include tax benefits. It doesn't include inflation-induced debt destruction, multi-dimensional asset class. This is just a very simplistic example. So you put in $70,000 and you got back essentially $23,100. That gives you a 33% return on investment with 6.6% appreciation. You amplify and multiply that return with the beauty of leverage. And remember, leverage can cut both ways, but it really doesn't cut both ways very often at all. It's incredibly rare how it cuts both ways when it comes to income property investments. Why? Well, because the tenant pays the bill for the leverage. They pay the mortgage, and hopefully they give you some extra every month called positive cash flow. And even in the worst case scenario, like the worst economy in seven or eight decades, I'm talking about compared to the Great Depression of the 1930s, we had the Great Recession of about 2008, 2007, 2008, okay? In that time, all of these people that were irresponsible with their leverage, or even if they weren't irresponsible with their leverage, they got all the goodies. They got the workouts, the loan modifications, the short sales, and in some cases, the government even let them off tax-free without a tax bill for debt relief. I mean, look folks, it's not fair, but the world isn't fair in case you haven't heard that. <laughs> I'm sure your parents probably told you, the world is not fair. It's not fair. No question about it. The people that were leveraged got all of the benefits. They got the benefits on the upside and on the downside. The people that didn't have the leverage, they didn't get any loan modifications. They didn't get any workouts. They didn't get any short sales. They didn't get the government saying you can have debt relief tax free. Didn't happen for them, unfortunately. Not fair. No question, not fair. But that is the simplistic example there. Now, Baselane, our sponsor, 
A lot of you have checked this out and liked it. It is the number one banking platform built for real estate investors. It's banking, online rent collection, bookkeeping, tax reporting, analytics, and more. You can enjoy real-time cash flow analytics on your properties. You can get ready for tax season with automated bookkeeping and financial statements ready for your CPA. You join more than 40,000 real estate investors who trust Baselane to manage their rental property finances. And uh, you can open an account in just a couple of minutes. I did it. It was super easy. Go to baselane.com slash Jason for a chance to win a $500 Amazon gift card. That's baselane.com slash Jason. And be sure to register for our Empowered Investor Cruise coming up real fast. Just do that at jasonhartman.com. 